In this video, we're going to look at configuring the Python interpreter in PyCharm. A few years ago, PyCharm included the, the ability to change between different interpreters for your code. This is a nice convenience, but it added a layer of confusion. The um, error message you get when it's not configured correctly is if something like this, where you have no interpreter. Now you can choose a particular interpreter by going to run edit configurations and set up an interpreter to be used for that one file to be ran. You can choose between an installation interpreter, interpreter if you can find it. And then you could run it, but it wouldn't be configured for anything but that one file. A better choice might be to do the configuration either from the toolbar here or up here. It's the same thing, file settings. It'll take you to the project interpreter and then choose an interpreter for the project. If you wish to choose between other interpreters, you could do so. Right now I only have this installation, 3.7, but I can hit the plus sign go find a different interpreter and set it up. Like I have uh, version 2.7 installed on here as well. I can add that environment. And now I could test code as if I were running it on 2.7 instead of 3.7. Again, a convenience, but it does add that layer of complexity. Okay, let me uh, change this run. Edit configuration. There we go. So I can now switch back and forth between these different interpreters if I wanted to. You can see they react differently depending on what I'm trying to do. Now, one of the reasons why um, PyCharm doesn't always get configured correctly um, when you first install it is because you may not have chosen to include the path on your installation. So if I, um, if I check that box, install Python, now when I install PyCharm, it should find the location during the installation of where Python is installed. And uh, that is a, a little bit uh, better. Of course, you can always just go find it, but sometimes it's buried way down deep. Often, I'll just go ahead and choose to install it on something, uh, a location much simpler, just to make my life a little easier. It's a personal preference. Now that Python has successfully installed again, let's see, yes, that'd be fine. Once my new Python installation has completed, I can come and add it as a new interpreter. Let's come back over to file settings, go over here, choose to create a new interpreter. Let's add. Point to my new installation. If you have if it can't find it in the dropdown, you can always go looking for it on the hard drive. And the reason why it might not find it in the dropdown is because it's not in the path correctly. Um, you will have to give it a unique name because it's going to copy things over um, from this folder into a new virtual environment. So I'm going to call it, this is, um, Python 372, a little bit different interpreter than my earlier version. Uh, and I'll make it available for other projects in case they want, I want to use it again and say, okay. Now at this point, it's going to copy files that it needs over to my new virtual environment. And that way, whenever we're working with it, we have just the 
the items over here that it copied to interact with. So now I have three different virtual, in other words, copies of the Python uh, runtime. I've got 2.7, uh, 3.7, and excuse me, 3.7.2, and 3.7, I think this is 3.7. Um, it's zero zero or something. It's it's a different version. But now I can choose between them for testing purposes. And uh, in my case, I'm just going to go ahead and choose my newest install. Say OK. And then whenever I come over here to make a brand new project, I can choose between the different interpreters or just use the the one that defaults to. It's kind of up to me. And then make my new file, put my code in, run the code, and you can see that it's using my my little interpreter, my virtual environment, Python 372. Hopefully that makes sense, and hopefully you find this useful. Take care.